in today's lesson we'll be starting chapter one of the uh, textbook okay and chapter one is a theory chapter based on computer hardware so uh, the first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to get into your classroom and download the relevant material so first better get to, uh, first you'll have to download the presentation so you can click over here and uh, then click in open a new window and then you can click on the download button and then also uh, you can click on open then uh, while that has downloaded uh, you can also at the same time download this document question based on textbook content new window Let's download this as well Let's open this document as well Uh, also at the same time uh, you could also download the worksheet and the quiz okay you can download and keep it with you I'll be instructing you on when you will have to work on these two documents for now what we will be using is we'll be using the presentation and we'll be using uh, questions based on textbook content okay so uh, moving on to our lesson okay so this is chapter number one uh, the first slide goes on to say that uh, digital devices are pieces of hardware that use computers or mic microcontrollers and they are found everywhere in our digital world they enhance and support how we live our lives every day okay so that is so true today almost every uh, thing that you try to do is being done with the use of a computer okay in some way or the other almost every action that we try to do every time we try to uh, achieve something Thing. it has to be done through the use of a computer okay Today almost everything is happening online okay even if you take for example taxi drivers taxi drivers nowadays are no longer going around looking for hires they do have a smartphone with them and on their smartphone itself the location of the hire is there they just go directly to the hire pick the person up and they start the journey okay so basically what they are just telling us is they can connect and work together to give us the data we needed we need when and where we need it okay digital devices are always developing okay so you know always a newer version of whatever you have is coming out okay you can never say i have the latest next day something else is going to come out okay so this changes the way in which they are used by individuals organizations and local national and global societies so because computers are becoming so advanced and because that they are becoming so small i mean which means so portable and they are becoming so powerful okay the way individuals like me and you the way organizations okay the way they function is completely changing okay so a few pictures over here will tell you what has happened okay so look at the computer that was there those days and look at how you know portable the computer has become today okay then they are showing you 1979 this is a 250 megabyte hard drive okay so today we do not have a 250 megabyte hard drive that this amount of space is not at all enough for anything okay but like it's almost the size of a room and a person has to be a protective gear to use it but today just look at the size of a 16 gb micro sd card okay completely changed just look at the size and difference and also if you look at this those days this could be something negative those days people used to play physically children used to go out they used to they used to be in the uh, fresh air okay playing physical games but today it's all happening online okay people sit in one place and uh, they play their sports okay so we have to agree that digital devices has completely changed how you know individuals like me and you operate today okay uh, now what you need to understand over here is how a computer works okay that is the most important thing this is like the foundation of the entire syllabus okay 
now the first thing you need to understand is data is given to the computer through input devices okay so what are input devices devices which basically give data to a computer that is what we call input devices okay so a few examples of input devices have been given for you a mouse a keyboard a microphone a microphone is used to record your sound okay so these are a few examples of input devices so these devices okay examples such as these devices give data to the computer okay so now you must be wondering what is data data is raw facts okay something which cannot be understood by humans okay so you press a key on your keyboard that's data you type something on your keyboard that is data you click something on your computer on, on, using your mouse that is data okay something which is not meaningful for data to become meaningful okay for data to become meaningful what has to happen data has to be converted to information okay information is processed data can be understood by human is it clear so when you press the letter a in your keyboard your first pressing data it goes to your computer it gets processed then the letter key the letter a appears on your screen that letter a appearing on your screen is what we call information is it clear so first data is given to the computer it is converted to information by something which we call a processor the function of the processor and how the processor works will be learned in chapter number 3 now once information has been uh, once the uh, data has been converted into information immediately what happens information is given to the user through output devices okay so once data becomes information then that information will be given to the user using a monitor maybe a speaker printer a projector using any output device okay what you do need to understand is while data is being converted into information okay while data is being converted into information there is something happening in the computer storage okay just like how when a human being is trying to understand something you know when somebody tells you something you try to understand it right just you know as when you try to understand something what happens you use your brain right you try and retrieve information that you have earlier that you have uh, learned earlier at the same time you try to remember what question was asked to you isn't it okay so just like that a computer also when it is converting data into information it has to access its storage okay uh, so examples of storage is hard disk ram flash memory ssd okay we'll be learning more about this in chapter number 3 okay for now what you need to understand is just simply how this diagram works this diagram tells you how a computer works okay so there is data that goes into the computer that data is converted into information while it is converted into information something is stored in the memory something is taken away from the memory okay once converted into information output is given to the user okay so this diagram please do take your time and try and understand okay because this is the video at the beginning it's like the foundation of your entire textbook you have to know how a computer basically works data process information while the process is going on memory is being utilized okay then moving on if you are okay with this diagram we come on to something known as types of digital devices okay so there are many types of digital devices okay we can either say computers or you can even say digital devices they both have the same meaning okay so they range from very powerful main from main frame computers okay so some of the most powerful digital devices are known as main frame computers which are used by organizations for complex processing tasks such as statistical analysis and bulk data processing all the way to microprocessors okay so from extremely powerful computers which are known as mainframe to computers which are known as microprocessors so these computers can do extremely complex tasks okay extremely yeah you know many people can use it at the same time all the way down to microprocessors microprocessors are computers which only one person can use and they can do simple tasks such as what controlling a washing machine televisions and other household appliances okay so <clears throat> in between these two mainframe and microprocessors there are so many digital devices that you will have to learn of okay anyway let's see what are they so the first one that we 
we are going to be looking at is something known as desktop PC. Okay, so the word PC stands for personal computer. Personal computer meaning only one person can use this computer at a given time. Okay, so I'm sure all of you all would have somewhere in your life dealt with a desktop PC. Okay, so a picture of a desktop PC is shown over here. You can see all the components are separated from each other. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, desktop have more space for components than laptop. More space for components means you can add more devices to this. You want to fix a scanner, no problem. You can fix a scanner. You want to fix a printer, you can fix a printer. You want to fix a microphone, you can. You want to change the keyboard, you can. You want to change the speaker, you can. Okay. So that is something that can be done with the desktop PC. You can always add more components. You can replace components. Now that is something that cannot be done in a laptop. Okay. And often provides users with the option to up great than even okay so you are not happy with your keyboard you want a better keyboard you can always upgrade to a better keyboard you're not happy with the monitor you can get rid of this monitor put a better monitor okay so this is an advantage in desktop pcs okay when it comes to a laptop you can't change the screen of the laptop the screen of the i mean you can't go for a you can't upgrade the screen okay because the laptop has come with an inbuilt screen you cannot upgrade the screen as such okay so a desktop computer usually needs to have peripheral devices. When we speak about peripheral devices, we mean input devices, output devices, and storage devices. More on that coming up, okay, such as a monitor, a printer, a mouse, and a keyboard. So you can see in a desktop PC, you have all the parts separately connected to the CPU, okay? Moving on, it uh, goes on to say some desktops are all in one. This means that they combine the monitor with the PC hardware, okay? So, <clears throat> if you take some of the desktop PCs that are coming on, they are, they, are, they are changing a little bit. What happens is, you have most of the components inside the monitor itself. Okay, so look here, there is no separate CPU. The CPU is attached to the monitor itself. Okay, so a lot of space is saved. Okay, and some of these uh, desktop, these all-in-one desktop PCs, they have speakers on the side of the monitor. So, you don't have to have separate speakers as well. Okay. And the screen is a touch screen as well okay so this is what you call something now desktop PC this is what you call an all-in-one desktop PC the entire uh, system is built into one component okay just the mouse and keyboard are kept separately okay so this is another option for certain companies that do not want to you know uh, have computers which take up too much too much of space they can always go for an all-in-one desktop PC okay uh, but you do need to remember one big disadvantage with these all-in-one is that if one component stops working, the entire device is going to have a problem, okay? But if you come on to over here, if the speaker is having a problem, no, 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 no issues. You can just get rid of the speaker by a new speaker. But when it comes here, since the speaker is inbuilt with all the other components, and the speaker is having a problem, the entire device is going to be having a problem. That's a disadvantage with the all-in-one desktops, okay? Uh, moving on then we have something which we know which we know of as a laptop okay so laptop is a portable device unlike a desktop a desktop is not portable it is in fixed in one place okay <coughs> but when it comes to laptops the best feature of a laptop is that it is portable you can take it around with you and nowadays laptops are becoming so light they're becoming so small and they're becoming so powerful as well okay so Laptops include a keyboard, a screen, some of them are having touch screens, a trackpad, trackpad is basically the mouse that is fixed on the laptop and they have a rechargeable battery, okay, which means they can be used while on the move, okay. So having these features means they can be taken away from the desk, which means, which makes them an example of a portable device, a device which can be carried around, okay. Uh, so then there are some laptops are called desktop replacements okay these tend to be larger than other laptops as well as have a bigger and better quality screen and high performance levels okay so those of you you know who know of if you know of any gamers you will notice that gamers do not use an ordinary laptop they have to use a laptop which is extremely powerful and these laptops are even more powerful than what you call a desktop pc okay so that is why certain laptops are called desktop replacements because yes, they can be carried around, but they are not so light to be carried around. They are quite heavy because they are extremely powerful. Okay, 
and uh, for example you can watch this video okay this video shows you of an extremely powerful laptop okay it's quite heavy okay uh, but it does have its rechargeable battery which makes it portable okay then uh, moving on to something else which is known as single board computers so computers for example if you take a washing machine or if you take for example uh, the, if you take for example a meter in a taxi okay a digital meter that is fixed in a taxi or for example if you take a microwave okay or for example if you take a television okay you can call them single board computers okay because they are computers okay they are computers they accept data they process it they give information they have their own memory in them they are computers but they do just one particular task only or they do one specific task only okay so they are affordable computers used in education for example embedded computing projects and physical computing projects what do they do they carry out specific tasks for the user so for example you look at this examples of example the meter in a taxi a digital meter in a taxi a fully automatic washing machine for example then for example look at this picture where you have a gps system so this particular computer is used only for gps purposes nothing else okay so when there is a computer which is doing one particular task for the user we uh, refer to it uh, refer to it as a single board computer okay computers which do specific tasks for the user okay so uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to come to the this document which is known as questions based on textbook content okay and you please do try and attempt uh, questions one to five okay in our next video we'll be continuing from uh, mobile phones